In 2023, generative AI and especially large language models, LLMs captured the public's imagination with release of models like ChatGPT4 and Google's Gemini. This drove a widespread curiosity about their integration into enterprise labor workflows, despite the journey from proof of concept to full scale production presenting numerous challenges. Our discussion today will explore the intricacies of selecting problems suited for LLMs, share valuable insights into deploying these systems, and envision the evolving landscape of generative AI in business applications. This conversation aims to demystify the applications of LLMs, providing a roadmap for enterprises who are eager to harness these cutting edge technologies. Hi, this is your host, Aplin Bhartia, and welcome to TFR Let's Talk. Today we have with us Aaron Vermeersh, LLM engineer at Carrick. Aaron, it's great to have you on the show. It's great to be on your show. Really looking forward to today's discussion. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, today we are going to talk about, of course, uh, Gen AI. I want to know from you, what strategies do you employ to pinpoint high impact business challenges that generative AI can effectively address? I think one of the unique strategies that we've employed at Carrick is what we call the accelerator. What we do is we will meet with high level stakeholders within an organization and we will work through their use case and uh, really the entire business workflow. What this allows us to do is to not only find out their pain points within the organization and the pain points that they want us to address with artificial intelligence, but it also allows us to find the use cases where I see we can deploy artificial intelligence given uh, my experience. And so it might no longer be a scenario where they say, hey, could you build this model? But I can see within their workflow use cases that are easy to address with artificial intelligence, but it might not be their main pain points. So this allows us to not only address their top concerns, but also their moderate concerns, and then also the low hanging fruit um, that, that I can get. So we're able to scale across their entire business workflow, and I think address more than just the typical needs. Now, if we just reflect on the past year, what key insights have you gained regarding the deployment of generative AI in business scenarios to kind of ensure their success? I think the two key aspects that one should consider when trying to get these use cases with large language models or generative AI into production is first, you have to know the data. And what I mean by that is it is a completely useful use of an LLM engineer's time to sit down and actually go through the data, read it understand it. Try to do the job that you're trying to address with artificial intelligence because it lets you build a better internal model and understanding of what's happening, uh, which can then translate to better results down the line. I think the other key aspect that I see a lot is people will take their entire use case, give it to the large language model. And when the large language model isn't able to do that out of the box, then they write off the technology. But I don't think that's the best way of addressing these types of problems. What we really want to get at and what I have found to be the most effective way of deploying these technologies is that when I sit down with a stakeholder or I sit down with a product owner and we try to come up with a solution, I'm looking at the entire use case and saying, what is the key piece of that use case that requires artificial intelligence, which requires a large language model to reason or do some sort of logic with their problem? And then what parts of the problem can I um, extract away using software? So the key success comes from the blending of software with artificial intelligence to restrict that problem space so that the LLM can be more successful. Um, if you will allow me to, let me give you an example. There's a very um, interesting use case called like talk to your database. Uh, more technically, it's natural language to SQL. And so you give the database schema to the large language model and let the large language model uh, take user queries or user questions, write the query, 
and then we execute it against a database and the LLM will try to answer with what came to your database. What a lot of people will do is they think of this as an AI problem. Can I get the best model? Do I have to fine tune my model to the schema? Uh, let me hire a bunch of LLM engineers to come in and, and really treat this from the AI side. But I think there's a better way of addressing this type of use case, which is the question is not, how do I get a large language model to do natural language to SQL on my database? But rather, can I find a database schema for my data, which fits within the problem space that the large language model can address? Suddenly, it's no longer about artificial intelligence and statistics and fine-tuning and all of these uh, fancy words, but rather, it's now a problem that any database administrator can solve. Uh, and so I can sit here and say that out of the box, I would probably default to something like SQL Coder V2 as your go-to model for this use case. And then where you're going to lose most of your accuracy in production is going to be joining tables together. So if you can find a database schema for your data, which will reduce the latency for queries and also reduce the number of joins you have to make, you're probably going to find that you'll be much more successful. And this is what I mean when I say the core problem here isn't necessarily an AI problem, but it becomes a database problem. And it's about blending traditional software knowledge and technology with AI and knowing how to juggle between them and where to draw that line. Given the critical role of prompt phrasing in the performance of LLMs, what are the most effective methodologies for crafting prompts that significantly influence the success of a project? You can go online and you can find a number of YouTube videos, blog posts, articles from Google or OpenAI or Microsoft on some of the main strategies that we use to get better uh, prompts. One of these might be few shot learning where you give examples of questions and answers that you want the LLM to use. And then it will do in-context learning to try to improve your specific use case questions. The other one that frequently comes up is a uh, chain of thought, which is a use case to where you ask the large language model to reason its way through the problem, uh, extract information that it might need to answer the problem, and then generate its answer. Now, now there's going to be a, a dozen other strategies that may or may not work for your specific use case. But I think the one piece of information that I want to share based on the experience that we've had is that for large language models, really the best thing you can do for your use case to improve your prompts is to simply talk to the large language model. The types of uh, speaking patterns or lexicons that you might employ when talking to a toddler, your spouse, your boss in a presentation will differ. Uh, and in that same way, the types of prompts and ways that I write when I talk to Palm 2 versus GPT-4 versus uh, some of the open source language models will also differ. Now, it's not something that I can sit down and write a blog post about and say best strategies to uh, write for Palm 2 versus best strategies to write for GPT-4. I think what it really gets down to is we have within our brains a region which does communication very well. And you pick up on certain patterns when communicating with others to uh, communicate better. And in that same way, you're going to find that you become better communicators with some of these models by using them more. So I don't want to anthropomorphize large language models, but in this case, it's actually very useful too. The more you talk to a large language model, the better you're going to get at writing effective prompts for that model and writing them in ways and with specific words that will be more effective to that model. How do you envision the rule and advancement of LLMs in industry over the coming years? I think my answer to your question would differ uh, should it have been asked a month ago or two months ago. And that's really how fast artificial intelligence is developing. Uh, Gemini Pro 1.5 is an incredible model and the number of use cases I can now do because a model like that exists has uh, exponentially increased. But what I think you're going to start to see are more and more enterprises seeing the value in large language models and 
using them to not only address typical language tasks, but also tasks specific to enterprise workflows, uh, workflows that might be uh, human expensive, require an army of people to do. Maybe a large language model can uh, be used to address those use cases. On the more technical side, we will clearly see models become better and better throughout the year. Models will require, hopefully, less and less prompt tuning in order to get you to the accuracies that you need for your use case. But I, what I think you're also going to see is that the amount of money that you have to spend in order to prompt these models will decrease. I think right now, the big restriction on putting these into production is simply the amount of money you have to spend in GPU costs or proprietary model calls to Microsoft or Google or OpenAI. And I think that you're going to start to see these costs come down, especially as the open source community is able to push some of the top models to proprietary levels. Why pay for GPT-4 calls when you can download a model from Hugging Face, fine tune it and get GPT-4 accuracy. So not only will models get better, not only will open source models get better, but I think you're going to start seeing competition among uh, costs, which are really going to drive down what you're going to have to pay, open up the realm of problems that you're going to be able to solve. And the question for 2024, I think that a lot of companies are going to make is, when are we going to start investing in these technologies? How do we invest in them? And let's start finding these use cases. Aaron, thank you so much for uh, taking time out today and talk about large language models, how they can be used in the enterprise space. Thanks for great insights, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for having me.